What I want you to notice is a couple of things about this map. Okay. For starters, do you notice, if you look right at the top, it's quite hard to see, I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Right at the top in tiny grey numbers, you can see those three-digit numbers, what are those? Those are degrees of longitude, right? Because we're going, we're going east-west at the moment. So 150 degrees, 165, you remember they're every 15 degrees because why? Why? Because each one represents an hour, which is why beneath the longitude measurements, it says plus 10, plus 11. That means it's 10 hours ahead of, and 11 hours ahead of, and 12 hours ahead of, can anyone guess? The prime meridian. The Greenwich mean time, which is on the prime meridian. Okay? So just coming back to these guys, right? B would be GMT plus 1. And A would be GMT plus 2. Make sense? Yeah, Question. Uh, I think UTC and GMT are just different acronyms for the same thing. Yeah, I think so. Um, universal t something? Yeah, anyway, go look it up. Um, what I'm most interested in is, can you see, here's 180, right? You can come from the east or from the west, you'll get to the same spot. But then really quickly you notice the international dateline, which is in black, does not always follow the 180 degree line. So, I'm going to say sometimes. Watch how sometimes it is, right? You can see this spot up here, which is up in the Arctic Circle. This is up at the North Pole. Yeah, this is up at the North Pole. So here, up in the Arctic Circle, you can see the Arctic Ocean there. There's nothing much interesting happening. So therefore, you're right on the 180 degree line. But as soon as you start to approach land, it waves around. I'm pretty sure that's, uh, what's this? Is this Alaska? No. No, that's Alaska. No, is it? That's Alaska. What's this? Is this? Sorry? Oh, this is, yeah, wait, this is Siberia. Siberia is going to be right here, right? So you can see it bends around. In fact, it goes pretty far away from that 180 degrees. Why is that? What are they trying to avoid? Trading time. So what they're doing is they're trying to avoid these two different sides of the line being within a country. Because on either side, remember, <laughs> as you, you know, that's the, thing. the further you go, right, the further you go, you're marching forward in time, right? You're marching forward in time, so it'll be 12 noon, then 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and so on, right? But eventually you come back to where you started, and it's not like you can just keep on going endlessly forward in time. So therefore, when you cross backwards and forwards, you lose a day, right? You lose a day. So all the way forward, you're plus, 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 plus an hour until you get back, and then you lose a day. You have to subtract 24 because you're back where you started, right? Now that changes across this line. So you can see it waves around Russia. It comes back. You can see it, it, it keeps on waving around because there's these, this string of islands in here that are US territory. It returns at last to the 180 degrees, but it doesn't stay there that long. So here's the Pacific. Okay, It's hard to see because of all of the colors, but I want to point out, if you go back to the top, the colors represent different time zones. Okay? So the time zones don't exactly fit along the meridians because of countries being wanting to not be in different so zones. Yeah, it is. Just wait till we have a look at here. Again, follow that black line. So you can see, here it is. Right. Remember I said as you cross, if you keep on going east like my imaginary journey was over here, you keep on adding, adding, adding hours. But once you cross that line, you have to take away all those hours that you just added on. Okay. If you're traveling the other direction, you have to add time, right? Because if I was traveling to the west, you're going backwards in time, backwards in time, backwards in time. Until you went back around, you have to add that time back because you'll be back where you started. But have a look. Here goes the line down here. And then suddenly it goes east. It goes east big time. And then it whips around here in this weird sort of hammer shape. And then it comes around, there's a whole bunch of islands just cut straight through, and then it eventually returns back to 180 degrees. What's the point of avoiding okay. some islands and then going Right. Them? So, once upon a time, in fact, it was about 20 years ago, which in the scheme of things, not that long ago, um, this line actually went straight down and it passed through Fiji. So can you see where 180 degrees sort of, uh, where is it? It's here, right? In fact, that hasn't come back to 180. Here it is. So you can see Fiji, 
is right on this 180 degrees, okay? But it doesn't go there anymore. So about 20, I think 22, 23 years ago, you can look it up. These guys in here, Kiribati, they said, yeah, we don't like the line going down like this. We don't like the line cutting right through here, through here, and you can see why. The Kiribati Islands here are spread out really far. Okay, so you've got some here, and here, and here. These are all part of Kiribati. So they didn't want their own territory being in two different days at the same time. It was just messing with their brains. So therefore, have a look at the line islands there over on the right-hand side. Very coincidental name. Anyone want to guess what the line islands are named after? It looks like they're named after the International Dateline, right? But coincidentally, if you zoom out and have a look at what's nearby, in fact, the line islands are named after the equator line. Right? So the equator line goes pretty much bang through them, which is what sailors named the line islands after. And then, uh, 1997, I think it was, um, the government of Kiribati said, actually, we're also going to declare us ourselves all on this side of the international date line. Hence that weird shape over there. Okay? So lastly, it then comes back to here. And you can see it waves around one last time before it actually returns to the 180 degrees. There it is. Okay. You're talking about wait here or here? Yeah. Why does so this here? Are you talking about this here? Yeah. This is 180 degrees. This is 180 degrees, and this is not because of these guys. I think. I think it's because of these guys. Um. So. You don't need to, you'll never have to be like tested on like, oh, which islands are in and which ones are out. But all I'm trying to get across to you is, essentially time is about these meridians, except for a few oddities of history where we decide to do things differently for whatever reason, economical, business, historical, we see fit. Okay. okay, so by now, you've got your computer there now. So what I want you to do is come have a look at exercise 10G. And let's have a look at using this knowledge, because it's not that complicated, in uh, a question like this. So I'm going to rub off my globe now. <laughs> so, the basic fact. Remember, how many degrees results in an hour of time difference? How many degrees? 15 degrees. 15 degrees longitude. Which means that every degree of longitude is how much time different? Um, an hour is 60 minutes, right? So if I divide both sides by 15, then this will result in 4 minutes over on the left hand side and 1 degree of longitude on the right hand side. So have a look, simple question. It says find the difference in local time. By the way, you need your calculators for this. Between two places with a longitude difference of whatever. Okay, so let's do the first couple. 1A, 30 degrees of difference. Right? Every degree gives you 4 minutes. So this is going to be equal to how many minutes? 120 minutes. We generally want everything because of the scale we're working in. We generally want it to be in hours, so that's... Two hours. Two hours. Not so hard. Let's skip over to part C. If you've got 85 degrees difference, this is a bit more of an awkward number. So you go ahead, every degree is four minutes. So when you multiply by four, you get 340 minutes. Now you could go ahead and do the thinking yourself to do the conversion, but there's an easier way. Sorry, Holly, I'm just going to pinch this. You're not doing anything with it right now anyway. Now you can think this through and do your 60s and all that kind of thing. But in case this is some weird random number, right? Here's an easy way to do it. 340, go ahead and type 340. How many minutes are there in an hour? 60, so if you want to divide, sorry, if you want to convert this into hours, just go ahead and divide by 60, okay? Now what it's gonna hand you is a decimal because it's a calculator and it works in decimals. But our calculators can do conversions for time, for imperial, right? Which button are we going to need? It's the degrees, minutes, and seconds button, right? So my calculator display, or Holly's calculator display, currently says 5.6666, etc. 
So if I hit degrees minutes seconds, it's going to be five hours and 40 minutes. Which makes sense, because if you add another 20 minutes to this, you get to six hours, which is 360 minutes. Okay. So, um, you can also be asked this in reverse. This is if you're given the angle difference between longitudes. If you're given the time difference, then you can also work out, well, how many degrees apart should they be? Okay. 